Ladies and gentlemen of the internet, meet the Apollo IE. It's new, it's exciting, it's very pointy and comes with a loud and powerful V12 engine. But rather than have me talk all about it, I'm here to meet Ryan Barris from Apollo who will give us the skinny. So seeing as we're here in the middle, let's talk about the motor. Sure. What's it all about? So a uh, 6.3 liter naturally aspirated V12 that we developed with our engine partner, Autothetical Matori. It will rev to in excess of uh, 9,000. Now, so it's around 800. There's a rumor that it can get a little bit more though. So we've done a feasibility study that basically at an additional cost that the client wishes, we can do further development work on the engine to extract 1,000 horsepower still being naturally aspirated, the engine would rev to over 11,000 RPM yeah. and would have a compression ratio of 16 and a half to one. So why, why, why did Apollo decide to go with natural aspiration rather than say turbocharging or, or hybridization? Yeah, so I mean, for us, simply put, is this is not meant to be a numbers car. This car, its philosophy is to pay homage to the old GT1 days, to be an analog car that was an emotional experience to drive in every level and something that was usable. There's only so much power that you can efficiently translate through the tires, especially to the rear wheels. So for this, uh, 7, 8, 800 horsepower is more than enough, especially because the car is lightweight. The car comes with um, two exhaust systems, and it's actually the center section that's interchangeable, which has larger mufflers, depending upon if you have to meet certain noise restrictions for road use, or if you're on a track where there's, uh, there's noise limits. The exhaust itself is um, made out of a mix of titanium and inconel and uh, a signature piece in the rear, which is the Trident tips, um, are 3D printed out of a solid block of titanium, rapid prototyping. So just, just the tips of the exhaust are more than a BMW M4? That's correct. That is insane. Look at this wing, man. Tell us all about this. Yeah, so it's striking in design looks. Uh, designers and aerodynamicists worked very closely. So it's striking, and I think the car is very beautiful. Um, but it's highly aerodynamically efficient, which is closer to that of like an LMP2 car. It is with no active aero. Because as you know, in racing, they still don't permit um, active aero, one. And then two, we as a brand put safety at the highest priority. Uh, with a car that is capable of this much speed uh, in the corners, what happens if part of your active aero fails mid-corner in a certain situation under extreme loads? Uh, we don't want to put our clients in this situation. What's the deal with the wheels? Because they're quite special. Yeah, so the wheels we uh, uh, developed in partnership with BBS. Mm -hmm. So the car actually comes with two sets of wheels and tires. As you know, this is a serious track car and also a road car. Mm -hmm. So these are the road wheels and tires. Um, and then we have a set of 18-inch um, uh, racing wheels with Michelin slicks. So we have designed the hubs, which come from an Austrian specialist called Penkel, which they use in LMP1 and Formula 1, to accommodate two brake kits, which the car comes with. So the car right now is wearing our Brembo carbon ceramics that we developed with them. But if you're going to do extensive track use, you and I both know that the consumables of carbon ceramic rotors are very high. So we include a AP Racing steel brake uh, kit for the car. What is more crazy, the interior. So give me the skinny on this because the seats don't move, do they? Yeah, I mean, they're fixed seats. In a sense, there's no seats. You're actually lying in the monocoque. It's a very unique position. So you're basically reclined more like you would be in an LMP1 car with your legs raised slightly. Yeah. And in order to fit the drivers, we 3D scan them. And is this eligible for competition itself? Everything in the car is gonna be built to meet and exceed FAA regulations. So you're saying earlier, this is a car in, in, in the spirit of GC1, whereas in theory, it could be a GT1 car. In theory. In theory, you know, we've taken uh, measures. It can't comment any further, but regulations are coming that might be of great interest to the lovely people of Apollo. Perhaps, <laughs> perhaps. perhaps. It is easily the most eye-catching hypercar out there. Talk us through it, man. We had a couple inspirations for the design, right? So one was to make a car that had GT1 proportions. So this car actually has a longer length mm -hmm. than a CLK GTR, a McLaren F1 GTR long tail. It has the presence that are very unique in the market today to pay homage to GT1. Also on the design though, influences from organic shapes. The front bonnet is just like an arrow. Also, he used inspiration from, let's say, apex predators, uh, such as sharks down to insects. What's important, at least from a design perspective in our opinion, is that using organic shapes can lead to more of a timeless shape over time. 
that is insane. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for talking through the car, and I look forward to having a go a little bit later. Yeah, my pleasure, my friend. <laughs> Cheers. So there you have it, all you need to know really about the Apollo IE. This is what it is now, it's going to change ever so slightly, it might go racing and it could have a thousand horsepower, but I'll tell you a little bit more later in the year when I have a go behind the wheel. <laughs>